everyone, what is up? My name is Kay, and today I'm going to be doing a video about the five things I wish I knew before I got my first guide dog. Um, just to preface this video with two quick things. One, a lot of these things are negative, but like, I think the positives still outweigh the negatives, and I don't think any of these things are a reason not to get a guide dog. I just think that like, I wish I knew these things before so that I could have been more prepared. Two, I am very young and I am not a dog person, or at least I wasn't a dog person. So like, if you've been around dogs your whole life, some of these things might not surprise you. And if you're like, older and like, I don't know, a parent or just like, an older adult, you might also not be as surprised by these things. But I was 18 when I got my first guide dog and I knew like nothing about dogs. So, with that said, let's get into the video. Zena, forward. people treat you when you go out in public with a guide dog or a service dog of any kind is completely different in the way that they treat you if you are a cane user or if you have any other like mobility tool um yeah I had no idea and this is so dumb because like yeah I'm taking a dog everywhere of course people would notice but the thought of people like noticing and saying things like did not even cross my mind I figured it would just be the same as a cane where like no one said anything and I don't know like I just I didn't like genuinely did not think it would be different um but that is not true everywhere I go everyone's like oh my god it's a dog it's a dog do you see that dog what kind of dog is that how old's your dog what's your dog's name like everywhere I go like I can't leave my house without being asked like a hundred thousand questions everywhere I go and it gets old like I feel like if I had heard this before getting my dog I'd be like oh that's no big deal like I can handle that but I don't know like it's it gets harder like the more times it happens and it gets really frustrating to be singled out everywhere you go because of your disability and like because of something you can't help it's really like annoying about this is that people can't respect me enough as a person with a disability to just ignore my dog and treat me like a human like it seriously is dehumanizing to just constantly be the one with the dog and to constantly be getting questioned it's just guys old and like at this point I'm pretty good at handling it but when I first got my guide dog I was really awkward and bad at handling it just because I had no idea what to expect and once I left the bubble of our you know class the seeing eye I was just like I had no idea what to do and I had a lot of really stressful awkward situations and now like for the most part I know how to like get out of situations and stuff but like I didn't back then so it just completely caught me by surprise and I wish I could have been more prepared for those situations. Number two, a dog acts like a child, not an adult. So again, I didn't really know much about dogs before getting one, but I thought that dogs would act like adults in that like, you know, when you're hanging out with your friends or like going out with family or whatever, when you're around adults, you never really worry about like behavior and like that sort of thing like I would never think I'm going out with my friend like oh what do I do if she misbehaves how will I discipline her how will I make sure she's you know being good like you don't have those thoughts when you go out with an adult and I thought that a guide dog would be the same sort of thing because I thought like he would be so well trained that he would just behave for the sake of behaving and like I wouldn't really have to do much no. When you get a guide dog, you become a parent. And I I don't want to say I wasn't ready for that, but I just didn't know that that was what was happening. Um, and it was like, oh, okay, now I'm a parent, apparently. Great. Like, I don't know. It's, it, was not, it wasn't like a bad thing. It was just like, I had no idea that was going to happen. Um, like, especially when I first got my dog, any time that I wasn't paying attention, he was finding something to do bad. Like, he would be sniffing something or eating something or trying to get someone to pet him or, like, just, yes, misbehaving. And so I had to, like, constantly be paying attention to him and constantly be, like, making sure he was doing the right thing. Um, that also means, you know, staying on top of, um, you know, praising your dog every time they do something right and correcting your dog every time they do something wrong and on top of that knowing exactly the right second when you should praise or correct and the right um you know amount of praise or the right strength of a correction all these things you just have to like know in a split second and 
like you don't want to do it wrong and so that was kind of a lot um yeah I thought my dog would just be perfectly behaved but no now he I don't want to say he's perfect now but like I've worked with him so much now that he's at a point where he knows that he's not gonna get away with anything so for the most part he just behaves um but for the first like I don't know a couple of months to the first year even like it took him a while to learn that I was going to always be paying attention and always you know on top of him and yeah he he's a child very much a child okay number three this kind of builds off of number two but your dog is not a robot and you have to work to keep up your dog's training so before I got my dog I just kind of assumed that it would be like the thing I trained this dog to be perfect and then they would give it to me and the dog would be so well trained that it was basically just a robot and it would do its thing every day and I wouldn't really have to worry about anything that's not true um as I said before like I had to work with him to like train him a lot t for that so that he would understand um you know to listen to me and to respect me and to do as I say um also like continuously even to this day I still have to work with him to keep up his training um both when it comes to making sure that I use praise and corrections appropriately um at this point I don't really use many corrections but you know occasionally I have to um and then also I do like a lot of obedience work with him and just you know making sure that I'm keeping up with his training I have seen a few people um who have guide dogs from legitimate organizations um, even one from the CI who, like, their dogs do not behave. Their dogs really act the same as, like, a pet would act if you took it out in public. In my opinion, it's basically the equivalent of a fake service dog. And the reason for that is not because the training at the CI or at whatever guide dog school was not legitimate. The reason is that the handler has chosen not to keep up the dog's training. And if you're not keeping up the dog's training, like you're not gonna have a guide dog, you're not gonna have a service dog, you're gonna have a pet. And that's really a shame, especially with how much expensive guide dogs are and how much work the school has to do to fundraise to get you that guide dog for free. Um, yeah, I think that's just terrible, but it's true, like you have to really work to keep up the dog's training. For me, I don't mind this. I love working on training with him. It makes him super happy every time we train and like, I don't know, it's not a big deal for me, it's just something that I didn't know I was going to have to do. Okay, number four. This one surprised me. Um, it's really not gross. And to be fair, grossness is like a subjective thing, so your opinion on this might be completely different than mine, but for me, I get grossed out super easily. I like faint at the sight of blood. I always had to skip those days in health class when they got like really disgusting um I can't handle like gross smells I can't handle like other people's blood other people's like bodily fluids I can't like I get so grossed out I will just faint and like I was really nervous to get a dog because I knew that I was gonna have to pick up poop and that eventually at some point in time he would get hurt he would get cut there would be blood there would be I don't even know what, vomit, like, I knew that this was bound to happen, and I was pretty scared about that, because I didn't think that I was going to be able to handle it, but I found that I really don't get grossed out by my dog, um, I have no trouble at all picking up his poop, I, like, I don't even really think it's gross, I just do it, um, you just don't breathe for, like, the one second while you're actually picking it up, and it's fine, um, he has bled before, um, he got a cut once, and I wasn't grossed out, I didn't faint, I just like took care of it, it, it was no problem. Um, I haven't had to deal with vomit with him yet, but honestly, I, like, I think when I do at some point, I think it'll be fine based on experiences with other issues with him, like lots of diarrhea issues and yeah. But really, I don't get grossed out by him. And like that was super surprising to me based on my personality. But the way I feel about it is, that he like is an extension of me like he and I are kind of the same person um in a, in a similar way to that my cane I felt was an extension of me rather than like some other object like it was me and now my dog is me and so I feel like like it's just not gross like I can totally handle it 
Uh, that doesn't mean I can handle like blood and gross smells and stuff on other people or on other dogs, but for him, like, it's fine. I feel the same way looking at one of his cuts as I would like looking at a cut on myself. Like, it, I don't get grossed out. That's not to say you won't, because like, we're different people, <laughs> but for me, I was very pleasantly surprised to find out that like, it's fine. I can handle it. <laughs> Okay, lastly, number five, um, having a guide dog is all around way more emotional than I thought it would be. Like, I, I don't know, I didn't think it would be that big of a deal. It is. Um, so, I don't know why I say it's more emotional at first, but like, it's, I don't know. I feel like it's different kinds of emotions throughout your journey with your guide dog, but at first, it was super emotional for me. Um, because, like, every single time I made a mistake, and, like, realistically, it's my first guide dog, of course I'm gonna make mistakes. Like, you're gonna make mistakes with your dog, I'm gonna make mistakes with mine. No, it's not necessarily good, but, like, it happens. But every time I did anything even slightly wrong, I would just feel so guilty and so terrible, and, like, I was just a failure as a parent, and, like, I don't know, it just got super emotional. I would have days with, like, Especially the day like when more than one thing went wrong, I would just get super stressed out or I'd be like, oh, was I supposed to correct him then? Or, oh, did I correct him strong enough? Or, oh, wait, I corrected him, but actually it turned out he was doing what he was supposed to do and I just didn't know that. Or like, at first I had some issues with him having accidents and so that would be super stressful. Um, like, it just everything is new <laughs> and it's hard. It's very emotional and like, I just didn't, realized that it was going to be um but really my life is in his paws and his life is in my hands and so anytime I did anything a little bit wrong I just felt super guilty and scared and even when I was doing things right I would just be nervous that I wasn't doing it good enough or whatever and then now I would say I'm like pretty much over that and I don't really make mistakes that much anymore because like I know what I'm doing but I do sometimes, and when I do make a mistake, I don't let myself, like, I don't beat myself up over it. And uh, I think that's just a very important lesson to learn. And really, I think the only way to learn that lesson is to live it. But I think it also is helpful for you guys to know, just going into getting your first dog, it will be super emotional, you will make mistakes, and that's okay. <laughs> like, as long as you're doing your best, it's fine. Your dog will make some mistakes, because it's still new to this, it's still getting used to you. You will make some mistakes because you're still getting used to your dog and like you just kind of have to let it go and just enjoy the time that you have with your amazing dog really i think like i said this before but you're a parent and the emotions of becoming a parent are like wild um of course i don't want to say this is the same as like having a human child like i'm sure that's way more stressful and i'm definitely not ready for that yet but it is a form of parenting, even if it's not like exactly the same as having a human baby. Okay, those are my five things that I did not know or that I wish I had known before I got my first guide dog. I hope if you're planning on getting a dog, this was helpful for you. Um, really, as I said before, like none of these are reasons why you shouldn't get a dog. They're just things that I think if you know ahead of time, it might make your transition easier. Um, so yeah, I hope you found that helpful. Let me know in comments if you have any questions. If you have a guide dog, be sure to let me know in comments if there's anything that I forgot in this list or anything that you experienced that I didn't mention um, with your transition. <laughs> Especially if you're young, I think it's super, like it's a very big life change to like become an adult and go to college and on top of that you have a dog to take care of. Like it's just, it's a huge life change. So hopefully this video could make that a little bit easier or less scary for you. Um, but that's all for today. I hope it was helpful and I will see you in my next video. Bye!